Now we go to uh, uh, Andrea Rapagliosi. Andrea Rapagliosi is the president of uh, uh, Vaccines Europe, uh, which is the European Va uh, Vaccine Manufacturers Association, and uh, which represents the major innovative research base vaccine companies operating uh, in uh, the continent. Uh, Andrea uh, has a, a background of law, he got a law degree here in Rome, uh, and also master in legislative, uh, uh, legislative consultant. Uh, as a matter of fact, he started, I think, his career uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the Italian government level, uh, and then he migrated, I mean, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, the uh, industry world. Uh, and uh, he, uh, will, uh, uh, he will be uh, uh, presenting uh, on uh, <coughs> health and growth, the industry's contribution uh, to a healthier Europe. I also have to acknowledge uh, uh, the uh, Andrea Rapagliosi's input into this conference uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, his uh, uh, determination in uh, trying to have the conference going which really happened. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks Please. a lot. Thanks a lot, Sergio. Uh, thanks to all uh, for joining this conference. I think uh, congratulations should go to you, to the IFA, to the Ministry of Health, uh, taking the opportunity of uh, the semester of the Italian presidencies, really to report central. But I think uh, uh, the minister refer, uh, Minister Lorenzini, just at the beginning when she said, uh, let's put uh, vaccination at the center of any immunization policy or immunization at the center of any uh, health policy throughout, uh, throughout Europe or throughout uh, the continent. I think this is quite a, an important uh, element to, get, uh, to try to get the best of what we do have. Well, the state of vaccination, where we do stand, I'm not going uh, uh, to go in details through the, through the slides that will be made available later on, but let me just, uh, if I get the way out they work, uh, It doesn't matter. I can go like that. Voila, no. Do I really need it? Wow. Okay, good. Found it. Sorry. Uh, it shows the aging and uh, the familiarity with uh, high tech and, uh, <laughs> and these things. I have to live with it. Um, so, very briefly, OECDC 2012. What, 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 what tells to us these slides? That, uh, Healthcare expenditure uh, as a whole, uh, they go with public investment in healthcare. There's nothing it's strictly linked uh, in both time uh, uh, before the crisis and after the crisis. Dropping public health expenditure, it drops uh, the overall of healthcare expenditure. So there is a role of public health and public health authority in sustain both private and public expenditure. The, the things that is more impacting us uh, is what uh, Again, Minister Lorenzini was quoting the famous 3%, it's the upper side of the slides, the 3% within the healthcare budget. If we have only 3% in prevention, ideas move uh, on the brain, on the gray matter of people, but also on the fund, on the money that we made available. What it says, OECDC, that is even more matter of concern, is that is reducing year by year. And that's, I think, uh, is the, so reducing the 3% to 2.9, increasing in different areas of Europe, uh, is show that uh, we are still not trying to exploit the benefit of prevention in order to free resources uh, for innovative medicine or other acute uh, diseases. Uh, again, numbers, but just to see how we want to read. It's been referred, if you are on the right, left side, you see the average of the um, flu coverage, vaccine flu. Vaccine flu are the most, uh, I would say, obvious vaccination. No one uh, would deny the value of vaccines in, in, in the flu, in the seasonal flu. Uh, I think you would uh, also appreciate that uh, uh, when you are in the industry of vaccination, you are completely on the other side of the spectrum of uh, the great debate like uh, hepatitis C drugs that has been referred earlier or during those days. Just to share with you, a vaccine for flu, average in Europe, uh, cost to healthcare system around three euros, so nothing to do with the uh, 
thousands and thousands uh, of cost of, our, of other drugs, but still what we see that is decreasing. There are only two countries that achieve the 2009 European recommendation that is vaccinating 75% of the elderly population, elderly defined as 65 plus. Not only, in many countries like this one, like France, like Germany, is decreasing year by year. People let's get vaccinated. So definitely it's not a matter of price, it's not a matter of uh, access, vaccine are there, it's really a matter of the program, the information, understanding the value, exploiting this opportunity. To put just something that is tangible and concrete uh, beyond this number, because you would say, well, if I don't achieve 75% in if I stay on 60%, so what? It's just a number. Uh, a study that has been recently published by Preo Italia uh, in the BMC Public Health Journal, what you will see that if the 75% would be achieved every year, we could uh, save or avoid or avert around 9,000 to 14,000 deaths throughout Europe. So there is a direct impact year by year in terms of saving life throughout Europe for consequences in the elderly population. And we are talking about thousand people. So we are not talking about few cases that are difficult to monitor or to capture. Same the impact on cost in terms of uh, hospitalization avoided. Same in terms of uh, uh, cost uh, in terms of days of lo days lost at work. So this is a bit just that's why I wanted to share that because sometimes we talk a lot about number percentage, uh, but beyond that number percentage, there's people, there's lives, uh, and. Uh, I think the ultimate goal of a public health program, of the public health policy to be implemented uh, is really to achieve this common platform, uh, say, between private sector, public sector, several stakeholders in order to put central the public health objective, saving life, making people living better in a nutshell. The other side of the slides, at your right side, is exactly the same what Dr. Teresa Celentano was referring before, and you see the measles, whooping cough, pertussis, and, uh, and rubella keep increasing. I think it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable that they, they don't keep increasing. What well, is being referred before by Dr. Teresa Celentano about the uh, 2012 uh, outbreak uh, in uh, Welsh, uh, in UK, is simply because people didn't, get, didn't vaccinate their kids. It's simply as that. The fridge of the GPs were full of vaccines. So there was no other reason than just a matter of communication and taking the role of that. I think, I personally, when I started to get vaccinated for flu, um, I have to tell that one of the things, definitely there is an individual interest in terms of say, you know, I want to avoid uh, to, to get ill and I want to feel better. I travel a lot. But then there is also what we miss sometimes uh, is the social engagement that we do have. If people like us is in many meetings and travel a lot and meet lots of people, that's really the, the, the social things that we do. This is really our social commitment. We get vaccinated for us, but we also protect other, other people. And sometimes people that is more in danger because I'm more vulnerable, as we saw before. The case of flu and I keep uh, hammering on that, uh, it's a complex lies, I'm not going uh, through it, but just to, to get the sense. I was referring before, if we pay a vaccine three euros average in Europe, uh, we are not talking uh, in terms of price as a barrier vaccine. Uh, we are talking about a price that is half uh, of a package of cigarettes uh, uh, in terms of cost. And the impact uh, I was trying to discuss, the, share with you before in terms of lives saved, hospitalization reduced, less cost, more active people. But there is a complex system to put in place to do that. It's not just, uh, you know, let's talk, uh, let's whispering, get vaccinated, this is good, or making a couple of tweets. That's not enough. The, the thing is that there is a program that involves many people. And we have to make sure that we put the central, the value. I get vaccinated because there is a value in doing that. Because I protect my kids, I protect my elderly people, the more we increase life expectation, the more we have uh, so what we call the silver economy, society that live longer, the more we need to protect them. One thing, uh, what we do not see, 
because these are the things that sometimes uh, we look at that and we say, wow, we are very proud. This came from uh, Poltkin, uh, has been presented by the European Commission in March. There was uh, in Brussels uh, a major conference uh, on uh, research and vaccination. You are more or less all familiar. It's very great to see that, uh, you know, in US, diphtheria, polio, smallpox, we are close to zero, if not uh, full zero. And many others, you know, 95 reduction, 92 reduction, these are very fascinating. And we know very well how to measure that, the medical, the scientific, the clinical impact on a vaccine. What we miss and we do not appreciate is when we look at them in a whole, which is the value of keeping a population lifelong fully immunized, which is the value for a society, which is a value to have our kids go to school, avoiding that the parents says not to go to school, keeping kids that are less uh, a danger for the elderly that they are in contact, the grandparents uh, and friends of grandparents. What does it mean for the adolescents? Have a better life uh, uh, at the university, at the high school. What does it mean for adults to work more, to be more productive, and for the elderly to feel better, especially when you have the impact of the immunosenescence. So to look uh, at vaccination as a paradigm through the life cycles, uh, rather not to segment uh, each vaccine, because that is the major contribution that we can have. Because then we move to what I, I was trying to define before, from uh, an individual value, you see the bubble down in the center, which is medically, clinically defined, to the impact to the healthcare system, to the impact on the economy and on society. To don't be really out of uh, generic words, uh, a study that has been presented uh, just a year ago at the European Parliament by a coalition of academicians, it's called SATI. They took an example, a model. They took uh, the over 50 population in uh, uh, the Netherlands. They choose the Netherlands because you have high coverage rate, vaccine coverage rates and very good monitoring system. Uh, and now they are replicating in France. And I would even advocate that would be replicated in any country of Europe, including Italy. And they simulated a seven vaccine preventable disease for adult people over 50. So they said, if we are able to cover all 100% is a model, is a theoretical model, how much would cost? Hmm? And if you, if you look, uh, it would cost something like uh, 500, uh, it would cost something like uh, 836 million to vaccinate all the Dutch uh, over 50 for all that. But if we look all the savings uh, that could produce uh, in terms of uh, less productivity loss for the people that is still in working life, uh, 50 to 65, what does it mean in terms of medical costs saved based on the epidemiological data? What does it mean in preventable uh, disability? Then you get uh, a ratio of uh, a fiscal gain uh, of 500 million which allowed to say that every euro that you put in vaccination, you save fiscally five euros, or one to four, in a way. What does it mean that, which is extremely interesting, that you are freeing resources, which is the great challenge for us, that these resources and the fiscal gain are not in the same budget. You spend from the budget of pharmaceutical, where normally prevention of pharmaceutical health care is, and obviously you have, for instance, in social care, in other services in terms of disability that are there. The incapacity of system to look in an holistic way to this positive impact, uh, it doesn't allow us to appreciate uh, or to fully exploit the benefit of that. But I think it's our goal uh, to make sure that the coordination between different ministries in every government, uh, when we talk about public health, uh, it goes far beyond uh, the limit and the funding uh, of the healthcare bill uh, but how we can make dots uh, and exploit uh, and make use of this uh, financial advantage. I'm going to finish. Uh, apologies for a few numbers. Uh, maybe some of them are not very clear. I, I will stay overall. If I'm able to explain, I will do. If I'm unable to explain, uh, apologies uh, in anticipation for that. Uh, just three take, take away, which I'm very, I'm very keen that I think. The first thing, and I'm going to ream and I didn't coordinate with no one, but I'm going to say need to place immunization at the center of the public health agenda. 
There's nothing to do. It's a tool we do have, can free resources, can maybe people living better, living longer, more active. Uh, there's really no reason uh, to put that in a secondary or third on the chapter five of any agenda. Should be really at the center, should make the best use of it. Just let's use what we do have. It would be great. Uh, and appreciate the contribution to freeing other medical resources. That's in our, in our call at Vaccine Europe. We are very keen. We have prepared a call for action for the new commission. You know, just a couple of days ago, they took place, they, they, they took in power, finally, after a long summer of uh, negotiation and discussion and hearing in the parliament. We really would like to see that this 3% in any countries is at least doubled. At least doubled. I think uh, it's outrageous to be uh, Europe, one of the most modern and advanced uh, uh, geographical area of the world, and having still this 3% reducing 2.9, 2.7. Unacceptable. And then we set the true north, what we call, you know, the true north uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, in a compact you have the magnetic north and then that there is also the true north. Eh? So to spot which is the true north. And the true north is exactly what you are doing here. Sergio, and we discussed yesterday with John, John Ryan from the Commission, how we can put all stakeholders. This is not a goal. Public health you can't achieve from one perspective. You really need, and it's not rhetorical what I'm saying, but you really need to have all the actors sign on for a contract, two, three, four, five years, and each one delivering on that. Thanks a lot.